Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we have found a second 1980s Battleship New Jersey battle flag. A battle flag is the piece of vocabulary I didn't have when we shot the previous video. In that video, you'll remember we found a huge yellow nylon flag uh, that had wetsu on it. We eat this stuff up. And we know that that phrase uh, comes from Captain Ronald Tucker, who was the ship's final commanding officer. And it shows up in a number of places around the ship in sailor art. Uh, and apparently that was also the slogan of previous commands that he had held. Well, going through the collection space recently as we're getting the ship buttoned up and ready for dry docking, uh, we found another one of these flags that's been rolled up down there for who knows how long. It, it doesn't have an accession number on it, so I can't match it with anything. I have no idea. Uh, presumably, it was found on board like the Wetsu flag, but it could have been donated by a former sailor. I, the, the bookkeeping that we've been able to find thus far has not given us the information on this. And like I said, we didn't even know we had it until uh, today, essentially. So uh, this one, Definitely also from the 80s. You can tell by the silhouette of the ship. And uh, so we'll call this the manned and ready battle flag as opposed to the wetsu battle flag. This one is significantly smaller and it's significantly heavier, uh, th this being made out of uh, cotton instead of nylon, but almost certainly made on board. Just the, the way that this is put together, it, it looks very much like it was made on board in the ship's sail locker. I uh, can't say for certain when, unlike the wetsu flag, I've never seen a picture of this one flying. Although based on some of the wear and tear and staining on this, it does look like it was used at some point. Um, just haven't identified any pictures of it yet. Former crew members out there watching it, if you've gotten more information on this, love to hear about it so we can add that to this artifact. So, uh, battle flags. I didn't have this piece of vocabulary before, um, I always associated the term battle flag with holiday ensign. The ensign, or the, the national flag that flies on the back of the ship, comes in three different sizes. The storm ensign is the really small one that you would fly in wet weather. That way it doesn't get soaked and then it's too big to be able to deal with. Then there's just the ensign, the regular one, that's the normal sized flag that you fly uh, for an Iowa class battleship that's usually about five by eight. Uh, the storm ensign would be, uh, uh, would probably be about three by five, maybe two by three on smaller ships. And then there's the holiday ensign. The holiday ensign is the big sucker. And if you've never seen one of those flying over Battleship New Jersey, well, you've got to watch this on our toe because when we shift colors from the fantail to underway, we're shifting from the regular ensign to the holiday ensign. Now, I always assumed that the battle flag is synonymous with the holiday ensign. Uh, when you're looking back at sailing ships and things like that during the age of sail, it's common to hoist the battle flag when you're going into combat, and that's your big national ensign that tells the other sailing ship that you're about to fight that, oh yeah, this is an American warship, or this is a British warship. However, in the modern Navy, battle flags tend to be custom flags made for specific ships. Sometimes there's a historic reference I forget which that flies the don't give up the ship flag. Don't give up the ship was said by Commodore Lawrence during the engagement between Chesapeake and Shannon during the War of 1812. And then that line that he uttered was sewn on a flag flown by Commodore Perry at the Battle of Lake Erie. Uh, other flags have something to do with the ship's name or namesake. The destroyer USS Kidd, while named after Admiral Isaac Kidd, often references the pirate Captain Kidd and so flies a Jolly Roger as their battle flag. There's all sorts of battle flags out there. Uh, the only common factor between them all is that they're freaking gigantic. Uh, there's an article in the description below uh, that, that has a good write-up of some of the ones in the current active fleet. I had not been aware of any similar flags on Iowa-class battleships, but now we found two on New Jersey. This one, that's kind of small for a battle flag from the early 80s that uh, apparently gets decommissioned at some point and replaced by the Wetsu flag by 1989 or 1990. 
Now th this one is cool uh, for a couple of reasons. You can see much of it is sewn together. You got the border, you got the, the white circle, the, the compass rose here is sewn on. But other aspects like the manned and ready anytime any place slogan is written on there uh, probably with like Sharpie or possibly uh, paint and stencil. And then the ship is also painted on here. And it's really, really cool because over here you can actually see the pencil marks where they drew um, the, the outline of the flag on here before painting it. So they put the disconcagey antenna slightly off to the side of where they originally drew it. The silhouette of the ship is interesting because uh, this is definitely taken from the uh, line drawing. It's like in three quarter profile of the ship that was part of all the, the battleship program documentation that uh, was, was put out around the recommissioning of New Jersey. And, and so this was something that would have been a good drawing of the ship, one of the few modern drawings of the ship. And notice it does have the mast and the phalanx and, and the modern stuff um, that the crew at that time would have associated with their ship. It was one of the few drawings that actually depicted the ship in that time period because it was created before the ship was even completed her uh, reactivation. And so it was on all sorts of documents they had access to. Uh, and it seems like that is what they I don't know if they traced it or if they just eyeballed it and freehanded, uh, but that's how they made the silhouette here for the flag. Uh, and at the end of the day, it ends up being a, a very compelling and well done uh, object. And I'm glad that we have it in our collection. I, I'm glad that we know about it now, and I hope we can find out more information in the future. While it is a consumptive use of the artifact to put it out in the weather and fly it, we are going to add to this artifact's history by flying it when we move the ship to go into dry dock in a couple of weeks. We're only going to have it up for one day, weather permitting. If, if it's really windy or really wet, we might not do it. Um, but the, the plan right now is to hoist the battle flags, dress the ship for colors, and really do justice to the ship and to the sailors who served on her uh, by raising these flags that, that haven't been flown in years and years and years. And by flying them all together, we'll be showing the ship in a way that she's never been seen before, never ever. So make sure you come out on March 21st, 2024, as the ship gets towed away from Camden to begin her dry docking. While most of the artifacts are already buttoned up, artifacts like this battle flag and the larger Wetsu flag will be on display for all the world to see that day. Which of the battle flags do you think is coolest on that list down below? Did your ship have a battle flag? Let us know in the comment section. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourself. So we really appreciate your support. It's allowing us to go into dry dock and do the work that we need. There's a link in the description below for ways you can donate to support the dry docking project. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us in the museum. Thanks for watching. When was the last time you walked beneath a nearly 900 foot battleship without getting wet? Or stood next to an Iowa class propeller three times taller than you? This spring, you can book a tour beneath the battleship New Jersey, the largest, most decorated battleship in US history while she's in dry dock at the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard Tens of thousands of gallons of water will be drained from the docks so you can see the hidden workings of one of our nation's all-time greatest military assets. Battleship New Jersey was first launched on December 7, 1942. She epitomizes the awe-inspiring display of American naval power and the indomitable American spirit. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to support the work of the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Visit BattleshipNewJersey.org to book your tour today.